Nintendo is a company that has earned a reputation for being innovative with its console and game design while also being stubborn to a fault. And nowhere has that been more apparent than with the Nintendo 64. The N64 holds a special place in video game history. It was the last major cartridge-based console until the release of the Nintendo Switch, and was the home to several games that were revolutionary in design. Yet it also marked the end of Nintendo's dominance in the video game industry, as its new rival, Sony, saw huge success with its PlayStation. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at the history of the Nintendo 64. Picture this, it's the early 90s and Nintendo isn't as dominant as it once was. The SNES may be the leader in console sales worldwide, but it's facing competition from both Sega's Genesis and the upcoming release of the Sony PlayStation. At the same time, the Japanese economy is causing sales to slow down due to a recession, and third-party developers are vocally upset about the strict licensing requirements for the SNES. From Nintendo's perspective, this meant that a new console was needed to strengthen the company's position on top of the industry. In 1993, Project Reality was launched in conjunction with Silicon Graphics to create a next-generation 3D console. Development took a while, as in over three years. In the meantime, Sony and Sega launched the PlayStation and Saturn respectively, while Nintendo settled on Nintendo 64 as the future console's name due to trademark issues. Finally, in June 1996 in Japan and September that same year in North America, the N64 finally hit store shelves. And what a launch it was! One of the first games available on release was Super Mario 64, arguably one of the greatest platformers ever made, and a perfect demonstration of what 3D games could do. The console itself sold out quickly, as 500,000 units were sold in the first four months in North America. Sales were further bolstered when Mario Kart 64 released in the first six months of the console's launch in all regions. And at the tail end of the N64's first year on the market, GoldenEye 007 created the market and template for first-person shooters on consoles. All told, 3.6 million N64s were sold in North America in the first year on the market. Not bad if you ask me. But that was just the first year. As history would show, one great year isn't enough to establish a market lead. And due to Nintendo's design philosophy and principles, the N64 was fundamentally out of its depth thanks to one major reason, cartridges. The reason why Nintendo chose to use cartridges despite the cheaper cost and greater storage of a CD-ROM isn't entirely clear. One reason is that cartridges have shorter load times than CDs, which is true even today. And in the 90s, CD's dominance wasn't a foregone conclusion. Nintendo took a risk that ultimately backfired, though the effects were felt early in the N64's life cycle. Due to the cost, N64 games were on average $10 more expensive than the competing PlayStation. The N64 may have been cheaper at launch, but the savings added up quickly. Third-party developers also, by and large, did not like Nintendo's decision to stick with cartridges because it was more expensive to develop and not as easy to use. Coupled with lingering resentment over licensing fees for the SNES, those developers didn't develop games for the N64. Exceptions like Rare meant that a steady supply of games would be available, but statistically, few games were made for the console. At the end of its life cycle, 388 games were released for the N64. By comparison, the PlayStation had 3,066 games when it ceased production. There may have been high-quality games on the N64, but due to sheer volume, many more were released for its chief rival. After the first year on the market, the N64's position began to decline. In the holiday 1997 shopping season, Five high-quality games, including The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, were delayed. In their place was Diddy Kong Racing, not exactly the marquee title you would want at Christmas. Of course, Ocarina of Time is one of the greatest games ever made, and its eventual 1998 release is one of the reasons why that year is so important to video game history. It was an example of Nintendo's belief in quality over quantity, though that mantra does not translate into sales. 
As the years went on, Nintendo would continue to lose market share to Sony. Nearly 33 million N64s would be sold before production ceased, which is small compared to the 100 million PlayStations on the market. But even though it lost the sales battle, the N64 was influential in its own way. While most N64 games were average, those that were great were truly astounding. Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and GoldenEye 007 are the prime examples of this. But as the console's life cycle continued, games like Paper Mario, Ogre Battle 64, and even the flawed Majora's Mask showed that the console was the home to great games. But even outside of the games, the N64 revolutionized controller design by being the first to have an analog stick. We may take it for granted now, but the analog stick changed how movement was approached in games, opening the door for bigger and bolder worlds to explore. A few years later, even the PlayStation got in the act, with a new controller to take advantage of the potential of analog sticks. Today, we can look back at the N64 and see a flawed console that nonetheless was the home to important games and designs that serve as the foundation of many modern video games. And without it, Nintendo would not have become the company that it is today.